okay, the self, the capital S, has nothing to say, uh, but volition wants to speak. It was said very nicely. Who speaks to students being the silence? Well, you know, for, uh, my orientation uh, with that is to dissolve all duality as the as the prime, if you like, the prime intention. So anything uh, that still um, is, seems to be existing as a separated self, as a me or a little me or a, or a limited me, is to try and observe that and let that go. Uh, with the thing of that, um, what speaks to students is not important. The, to just allow um, grace or the infinite field to handle that. Yes, often um, it's, it seems like it seems like speaking. Well, the best way to say it, volition, speaking happens, but nobody's speaking. So there's no body head trying to think about th what's said, or trying to be, identify that they are the entity that spoke the words. So words come out of emptiness, and they're not registered, or hardly registered, and not remembered, or hardly remembered, because it's not important. Um, and there is a refining. It's almost like um, as one dissolves um, the idea that the separated self, the ego, the thoughts, the bodies, that is the real me, as that starts to dissolve and evaporate, um, then um, it, a more natural form of talking and speaking without being uh, the head or without being the body or without being in location or time tends to spontaneously happen. It's totally meaningless. And um, and if there are students there, um, the experience has been that in the beginning, conversation with students may occur or may not occur, may occur clumsily. Um, but it's almost like the, the grace eventually finds the right words to communicate. Um, See, so you can't use language to communicate ideas to get of releasing identification of the layers of separation uh, to students so that they can um, get the gist of what is beyond form and, and, and practice to release those identifications which are still creating limitation in the sense of self or, or suffering. So, so who speaks? Like if, if, the, if the, shall we say, the teacher is in silence and there's volition to say words, well, for me, I mean, how that happened was, you know, uh, first of all, from Course in Miracles, all thoughts are meaningless. Everything is meaningless. I'm meaningless. The world is meaningless. People are meaningless. So that that then releases the idea that anything there is any ego identification with with anything as being special. Uh, so, uh, and the, from my own experience, I'm trying to disappear, trying to transcend, trying to delete uh, any uh, residual identification with what of the limited self so that it no longer hopefully doesn't come back so that um, nothing can speak silence can speak and silent and that which is speaking there's nobody there that speaks it or remembers it or cares whether the students understand it or not because that would then be um, that would then be ego identification so um, but uh, it's it's like with all even simple spirituality, surrender and faith and trusting uh, that if one keeps going and surrendering, that whatever evolves from grace, from the silence, from stillness, um, that will, that will, it may take a, be a, seem like a process of letting go of the old and becoming the new, but, uh, but it will eventually take care of itself. So sometimes there's fear of saying the wrong things, being clumsy, uh, forgetting people's names, forgetting what one even said a moment ago, but then, you know, that's also the process of clearing, so that doesn't matter. And then trusting that whatever is said and done and and what and whatever seems to happen, that it, it will be orchestrated uh, from the level of silence or from the infinite. Um, and the experience is that um, um, it will it will it it will evolve. As long as there is the willingness to just go deeper and deeper into those silent levels, um, there can be some uh, 
transit, tra it's transitory uh, problems like forgetting things, uh, walking into, you know, like hitting your foot on, on objects because you didn't notice them. Uh, because you know, one wasn't feeling, one was experiencing a non-local self. So these things, but then it seems like grace automatically adjusts itself eventually, and speaking eventually um, adjusts itself. And uh, the friends that seem to be uh, that seem to gravitate, and some will gravitate away, uh, and that's that's all fine. Just to trust in the letting go. So who speaks? I mean, it's it's. Um, the uh, the way I do it is like, if there's no me, there's no identification with thoughts and body, and the words that are said are not important, and the questions that are asked are not important. Just let it all go, and then uh, let you know. And if silence speaks, then let it speak. And uh, if there seems to be any ego consciousness of what was said or what was asked, then to clear that so that eventually there's no sort of um, you know, clearing away the layers of ego that want to identify as to anything that is said or done in this world from a level of um, uh, the separated ego self. Uh, 